management team. I've been at the U about uh, 10 years doing identity stuff for about the past three or four. And as you can see, we have a, a campus like everybody else. Um, <laughs> awesome. So this is, this is the environment that I work in and that uh, the grouper, demonst not demonstration, but uh, presentation I'll be showing it is about. Um, you know, we're an Oracle PeopleSoft shop. We're an Oracle database shop. We have Active Directory. We have CAS, Shibboleth, and we use um, ForgeRocks OpenDJ for an LDAP. And we've been moving off of uh, Spark and Sun to uh, Red Hat um, Linux for the past little while. Um, coworker suggested I put in a disclaimer. Um, so one of the important parts is there, there's a lot of other hard work from other people besides myself in this. In particular, this slide, which I stole. Um, anyway, everything in there is true, and, and you should believe that. And how many of you here know what Grouper is? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> That's Grouper. Yeah. It's a fish. It is delicious. <laughs> Make sure you try it while you're here. This is native to Florida. OK, so this is Grouper for Beginners. The goal here is we want to, in a fully automated fashion with no um, administrative or user interface, create a group for every course section and provision that group to Active Directory and have this done automatically on a regular scheduled basis. So that's what we're going to try to accomplish in this, uh, in this presentation. So everybody here seems to know what Grouper is. It's part of the Cypher framework. One of the things I find interesting is that it finds itself in two places, in provisioning and in access management. So it's kind of plays two roles. And this will show how it participates in both those things. Um, this is Grouper for beginners. And this is what the Grouper architecture looks like. And I don't think that's for beginners. That, that is just a lot. So we are going to try to narrow it down to just those four or five circles to accomplish something useful. Uh, and to even further simplify that picture, this is what we're really going to try to do. Starting on the left from our student information system, we're going to get our course enrollments via some SQL. And that's another important thing I want to point out about this. We're going to do all this without writing any code. There's some configuration, but we're not going to write code except for the SQL to do the query to get our course enrollments. Grouper Loader will, will get the enrollments and then match up the student or the instructor with, um, we get our subject or member source, uh, sources from uh, OpenDJ, match them up. We'll then create a, um, a, all the groups in the Grouper database. A little bit later, the PSP or provisioning service provider will come along, read those groups, and create matching groups in Active Directory for us. And when that happens, uh, then applications like SharePoint and whatnot can make, make use of them. So again, what is Grouper? And I had a hard time getting my head around this because there's a lot of terminology with, with Grouper. Grouper is part is in, it's a daemon. It runs in the background. It's also called the loader, sometimes called the API, because it uses the API jar file to get started. Um, they don't give you a start script. So you have to figure out if you want to run the background, you have to do um, you know, snow pop, put it in the background kind of thing. They don't give you a stop script. So you probably want to figure out some way to capture your PID so that you can not have to do kill whatever to, to, make, to make it stop. There's also the um, Cooper shell, which is started with the same shell script. It just doesn't have the dash loader on it. It's a Java bean shell, which means that you can actually type in Java code and it will execute it. I'm not a big fan of typing in Java code at command line, um, but it also has some built-in commands. Eventually, you will need to use the Grouper shell, but we're, we're not really going to cover that because we're beginners. And then, we, of course, there's a web UI that it has. And just for completeness, this is what the Grouper shell looks like when you start it up. It looks like any other command line tool you would use. This is our uh, Grouper web UI. Um, we've skinned it. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much out of the box. But this is the 2.1 UI, and the 2.2 UI is 
supposedly this close to coming out. And I, I believe it'll be a big improvement over what we're, what we're seeing here. Um, Grouper has some other terminology that other people have touched on this week. They have a concept that they call stems. They're really folders or directories. Um, so we have stems, and then we have groups. Um, the, the term stem is important because all the API calls will mention stem and, and, and that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. Then another part that really got, caught me off guard when I first started was the concept of a grouper loader job versus a grouper group. Because both of them are created with the create group button. But they're, they're fundamentally different. The, a grouper loader job has no members. It is a definition of how to create groups as opposed to actually being a group itself. But its icon shows up the same, and that was, that was took, me, took me a while to get it around. And, and, in the head around that. And the only way you know to do it is that the circle is, if you say grouper loader, and now you're going to get a grouper loader job as opposed to a grouper group. If you drill down to a grouper loader job, it looks like this. And this, this will go into this in more detail. But this just says, has all the definitions of how to create groups right there, how often to run them. You really can't see that. There's a cron job time frame schedule thing there, a, and a database link, and whatnot. Whereas a grouper group, when you drill down, looks like this, and you have options to add members, manage members, delete members, that kind of thing. But they all have that same two-person icon look to them. So, and I'm, I am going to start at the very beginning of actually building Grouper from scratch. They have a quick install. I, I don't really rec you're going you're gonna to need to use it, but don't really try to go very far with it because it's, it's so simple that it's going to cause you more problems down the road. You might as well just bite the bullet, do some of the heavy lifting, and get that out of the way. So to build and configure Grouper, it builds with Ant. It's not hard. Um, there's a lot of XML configuration you will do, so you need a text editor or whatever to, to edit the XML. It's written in Java. You don't really need to know Java. But you know, when things go bad in your log file, there'll be your typical Java stack dumps. And you know, that helps be familiar with that. Version control is your friend. You're going to make mistakes in your configurations. You're going to want to be able to roll back and roll forward. So make sure you get all your changes into, into version control. And like I said, the only real code we're going to write here is SQL. So get to be friends with your DBA and have them help you. And that will make your life a lot, a lot easier. And, and actually, this whole presentation came out of this, um, this document I wrote. And this is not the whole document. It will be available. It's available on Lanyard, the, the full thing. But this is I wrote this for my own sanity as a step-by-step -step way to download the tar files, build the code, deploy the code, and make it do something useful. And so I just noted all the little gotchas and every file I had to change is, is in here. And it, it basically starts with untar the tar. I don't get the code from the Subversion Direct uh, repository. I just get the tar files and untar them and go through all the steps of what files to edit, what settings to set, and what properties file. All that stuff. There's even instructions on how I skinned it with, our, with the um, CSS scripts and all that. It's, it's all in there. And what I did with this is I got an intern about two weeks ago, and I gave him this document. And I said, "Go install Grouper over there someplace else." And surprisingly, he was able to do it. Um, but along the way, he found mistakes and errors. And so, with the uh, material that um, is on the lander site. There's, you'll see a document that says Kevin's notes, and it's Kevin's corrections to everything in here. And so he did, he did a really good job and helped me a lot with that. Um, okay, yeah, they're, they're in my, uh, my box account. These links are on the lanyard site, so I'll try to write down by an R N B Z Q M. So once you get it built, or during the process of, of all that configuration, one of the important things we have to do is um, set up our uh, the sources XML, which says where are we going to get our subjects for our members from. And in my case, I'm getting it from our LDAP server. 
um, which is going to be defined in our LDAP properties file. I highlighted ID LDAP in red for a reason. Even if you're going to want to use Active Directory to get your subjects, don't change that to AD because that ID is used in so many places, you will have problems. And I honestly was never able to figure out all the places to change LDAP to AD because LDAP is so overloaded, you can't just do a simple search and replace. So pay attention to that ID, I think it's used a lot. Um, the next thing is, is the source of XML. Uh, we have to identify the subject ID attribute type and what all this is saying is that I have a um, attribute in Active Directory. In our case, it's unit. That is our distinguished name. That's our network ID. If I was using our Active Directory, it would be CM. But, so whatever is appropriate for, for your Active Directory or, or LDAP for your DN, you want to put in there. Um, and then basically, there's some LDAP filter type stuff you put in. It says, OK, I'm going to search. So when it said term, I, I thought it meant semester. But it does. It just means the the ID that's coming in, and you get substituted in there. And that's just a basic LDAP filter. It says look for unit equals this object class person, and then down here at the bottom, we're more red. You know, the uh, base D and where we look for people in our um, in our LDAP. The LDAP properties is um, pretty straightforward. Just tell them where your LDAP lives. I'm running 389 right now because I'm going to test environment don't need to be secure. Uh, then put in your, you know, your um, administrative user for your directory and the password. Password can also be put in a file and be encrypted if you don't want to just put it in the LDAP properties file. So once we get our, our subject sources set up, now it's time to create our grouper loader job and try to do some useful work. And so when you set up your group or loader job, there's a lot of things you can fill out in there, but this is the most basic, simple form. Um, at the top, we'll do some configuration in the, the group or loader's property file, and that's where we set up our JDBC connection to the database that we want to query. The fine point here is that says db.htest.url. That middle thing is what you put in the group or loader DB name. And it's like a very there's nothing to validate that or confirm that for you. You just kind of have to know that in my case it's he test. You could have multiple set of settings like this. I could have db dot um, he prod, and I could use that. Um, then we set a cron job time frame, so I set this to run every <coughs> 12 hours or so. And then the next thing is the um, the group or loader query, and this is the actual query, query that's going to be run to get all of the course sections. You could write the whole query in there, but what you really do is you write a view and then run your query against the view. Don't, don't try to put the whole giant query in this little box here. But I, I point out again that double quoted LDAP, that's the same one that you got back in your sources XML file. So you just have to match up. And what the type of loader job is this? We're going to create a list of groups from SQL or a, a SQL group list. And this is all my this is my um, my view to get every course section at the University of Utah for the for what we think is the what I think is the current semester. I, I, we can debate if I'm right or wrong on that. I, I will point out one thing that in that arrow says dirty data, you can't really see it. But that is the uh, course description. And out of all the courses, we had one come back that they put a colon in the course description. <laughs> and a colon is a special character in Grouper World. It's the delimiter between your stems. That was the end of the world. I could not figure out what this was. to be a long time to figure out why this particular um, Class had, you know, it's like really a colon in the description. Why did you do that? You, I guess you immediately filed a bug report, do some input filtering on the group, on the grouper side. No, because I, mean, I don't know what, I don't know where your bad data in your database. It's not grouper's problem. It's data entry problem on a register registrar side. I can, you know, 
Okay, so when we did that and it ran, this is what we got, got back in Grouper. We got basically, I created a bunch of stems, um, campus, we also have hospital, our courses, our current term, in this case it's our business college, the accounting department, accounting subject, account auditing, section 5510, or number 5510, section 1. And, I, and I, what I've done is I have three views actually. One view returns just students, one view does just, just instructors, and I combined them and said both instructors and, and students. So now that people can use this, um, so they can grant access to things that only students should have, or only instructors, or everybody. Might, might be overkill. Um, and this is what we want in Active Directory. We want to get actual groups with members in Active Directory because it seems like applications just really want to go look at a directory and say, are you a member of, or who is a member of some, some, um, some group. And so, this is how things will map. All those stems you had in, in Grouper become OEUs. This is optional. I mean, there, this is this is what's called, I think, um, in the PSP world, they call this the bushy way of doing things. And they have bushy and they have flat. I've never done flat. I, I didn't understand the reason for that. So I've always done bushy. So my stems become OUs, and then my groups become actual real groups with actual real members in them. And then the last step is the hardest step, is configuring the, uh, the PSP itself. You can spend a lot of time on this. This is where I recommend that you download the uh, Grouper Quick Install, because it has the examples of all the configuration files for AD, for Open, open LDAP, and some other things. And you, you really want those. Um, so you'll have to go download it. But that's really what you want is the uh, is the samples. Um, the PSP is case sensitive, and I will get to that in a minute. And th this could this could bite you. Um, subject ID versus subject identifier is something that's not still really clear in my head. So in my case, they're the same value, so I don't have to worry about about that. Th these are your PSP XML files you'll be playing with. I never touched PSP internal. The PSP resolver is an attribute resolver. It's just, it's, it is a shibboleth attribute resolver. If you know shibboleth attribute <laughs> syntax and that stuff, you will feel more, very comfortable in this. Um, and then um, the services, um, you'll, you'll play with that one. And then the PSP VT LDAP. I guess Virginia Tech gets around a lot and does a lot of things, because I, I find uh, there, there are things showing up in a lot of different places. So first thing we have to do is there's an LDAP properties file. It's the same one that we used um, at the beginning to set up our uh, subjects. Uh, we'll have to put some entries in there, so we have to, you know. Now, but this is not, this is, this is a target. Before the LDAP was, I'm going to go read from there and get stuff. This is to be the LDAP where I'm actually going to write stuff to. So in my case, I'm reading from OpenDJ to get users, names, and subjects and members. I'm going to create groups in AD, so this will be my AD um, LDAP. And as you can see by the fact that it has domain controller in it instead of just O. Set your base DNs, um, where, where things are going to go. This group or stem to provision, um, this basically tells um, the PSP where in all that grouper tree of stems you want to start provisioning groups from. You don't really want to start from the root, you usually want to pick some sub subtree and provision from there. Um, and also in this in the grouper loader properties file we go back to, we have to basically set up uh, how often we want to do this. Um, which again is just a, a quartz cron job. I don't know why you ever want to run it every second. Like I think it says right there, that's a little bit overkill. Um, the one thing important to see about this is when you just ask what is the PSP and what does it do, the PSP is in fact nothing more than a um, change log consumer. And you can write your own to do something special or different if you don't like what the PSP is doing. Um, so 
you, in that case, you write your own change log consumer, you extend some, some class, and you could do your own. Uh, you just say change log consumer dot my change log consumer dot class and put yours in there. The one thing that the PSP does that's also this this pretty nice is that even if it were to have been down or something was to have happened and it missed the changes coming out of the change log, it says, okay, every day at five o'clock in the morning, let's go back and match everything up between grouper and the directory and fix the differences. And so in my case, I've made grouper authoritative over Active Directory. So if Grouper sees something that's in the Active Directory, but it's not in Grouper, it's going to get taken out. Conversely, if something's missing from Active Directory and Grouper has it, they'll put it back in. And that, that's, I think that's a very powerful thing to have. Uh, here, so here's our attribute uh, resolver. <coughs> this should look familiar like some stuff that um, that Shibboleth does. Again, I highlighted that LDAP thing because it shows up all over the place, and you want to make sure you keep that in sync. Um, and then we can see where that base stem from the properties file we were talking about earlier is used in the XML. So there's a lot of interconnection between properties files and XML files, and so you've got to make sure you kind of keep them all in sync and know what you're doing. I guess you could just hard code in base D is right there if you wanted to and not use the, uh, the substitution. Now, this is the part that, that got me for several days. The PSP is case sensitive. So when you do a query against um, Active Directory, it returns OU and DC back in capital letters. If I were to put in the container ID little OU, little DC here, I'm going to get errors that there's not found. And I, frankly, this is a bug in the PSP because all it needed to do was go compare string, ignore case. But it didn't because OpenDJ returns lowercase. So I took a file I was using for OpenDJ and just changed the direct, change it from pointing at AD, OpenDJ to AD, and then things quit working. And I was baffled why that would be. Anyway, it's case sensitive, so it's little things like that that you really got to be careful for. <clears throat> Um, and lastly, I got through that uh, a little bit faster. Anyway, um, Internet 2 has all the, um, the documentation out there. Um, that last one, the grouper training, they have, I don't know, what is it, 15 videos out there covering all the grouper topics. You know, they're well worth watching. They, they help me a lot. Um, I had to stop them, play them back, stop them, play them back to get the fine details. But take advantage of the uh, of the video training they have out there. And then on that note, we have that. And if you have any questions, let me know. Not a single question. You did have to create a, a sources file for your for sources information before you were um, database lookup. Yeah, so okay, this is one of the interesting things about, um, and it's covered in those instructions on how to build it. Your UI gets deployed on your on a web server, and your daemon gets deployed on some other box. Their sources, XML files, had better match. Otherwise, you're not going to have a good time. And so what happens is, when you build the web UI, because that's really what I'm going to, when you follow the instructions, you actually end up building the web UI. The web UI gets sources XML from the grouper API directory and it puts it into the war file. And so those those two have got to match up. And you know, you yes, you could, I mean on the daemon side, you can go change the sources of XML if you want. Um, you know, things will things will start not matching up, you'll have problems. Um, so that's that's another thing. The, the sources of XML is a file. The web UI also uses the LDAP properties file. And you have some of the same issues here. And so, um, you know, make sure you keep them in sync um, during the build process. And and then where it really gets weird is, um, I think it's the log4j properties file. <coughs> um, the log4j properties file says grouper home logs grouper error log. 
Well, if the demon knows where Grouper Home is, he can go figure out where he's at. The, um, the UI, on the other hand, you probably want to put it under, like, Catalina Logs slash Grouper. That's not Grouper Home. It's not defined. It's a defined Grouper Home. And I had a real problem trying to keep these two things because they were slightly different. But they got built at the same time. And I asked the mailing uh, list, I said, well, you know, how do you do this? And they go, oh, we just hard code them. <laughs> and not, don't use properties. So that, that's an area that that's this loader properties file thing. Um, there's another little pain point of building where you have these pretty strong coupling between the UI and the, and the daemon part. But they don't necessarily have to be exactly the same. And so you know, there's, there's, there's lots of little gotchas along the way, that kind of stuff. Yeah. A few years back, there was this. There's, well, it's still there. This Grouper book, the kind of introduction to Grouper, really seems like this material. You know, yeah, I, 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 I read the book. It, it wasn't complete, though. I, well, I'm sorry, yeah. saying that the stuff you've got here. Yeah, I've um. Get added in there. You know, the goal would be obviously to uh, improve this document. Is uh, one of the things that um, trying to be a, a good employee at the University of Utah is add value to whatever it is I'm doing and one of the biggest values I can add is leaving a legacy of decent documentation so people can follow along behind me and, and get things done if they ship me off to do something different. Yes? Now, how long did it take Kevin to do that? It, literally, Kevin came in, this is my, my, our intern. Um, he, he, he was actually hired to work with our Active Directory department. So his background was mostly Windows. He's, he's a, some kind of IT um, student, not a computer science guy, he's not a programmer. Um, it's kind of information services, I can't forget the exact uh, program. But he came in with mostly Windows background. I gave him that document, gave him a few pointers on how to uh, use the Linux shell, and it was less than a week, and he only works 20 hours a week, and he had uh, mostly in Linux. Uh, and I was just, one, I was impressed by his effort and enthusiasm, and then I was kind of like, gee, I wrote a halfway decent document after all. <laughs> 28 minutes. See, I'm getting you guys out early because the last guy kept everybody 15 minutes over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.